Hi, this is the Chapter 4 overview video. Chapter 4, Work and Energy, is the first chapter in Unit 2, Mechanics 2, where we look at applications of basic mechanical ideas developed in Unit 1. We start by definition of work and how that is related to our first conserved quantity, energy. In the first section, you will see the physics definition of work which is force times displacement. If this doesn't sound like anything you call work in everyday language, well, that's something I want you to get start getting used to. We physicists still, um, I mean borrow, <laughs> words from everyday language. And there is a good reason for that. For example, when we say work, we think about some kind of effort being exerted. And when we physicists worked out how to express that idea of effort being exerted, the quantity defined by force times distance with the directions in mind, because they are both vectors, related most cleanly to some fixed reservoir of effort that could be exerted. Once you get used to the way we physicists use words, you can get the best of both worlds. There is already existing mental association for words we have borrowed, like work. Keep that association. At the same time, we redefine these words, work as force times distance, to add precision to the existing mental association, so that we can use them quantitatively, that is, math equations. Anyways, the relationship of work to the reservoir is best expressed in work energy theorem, which is the next section. It basically says, um, you can read through the derivations on your own. Um, that the network done gives the change of kinetic energy. This is the most basic way we can start to relate to energy. The first conserved quantity we introduce. When we have a moving object, that moving object has some quantity that is conserved. You see that when you see a bouncy ball. And this quantity doesn't have a direction. You see that with this conical pendulum going in circles at a constant speed to put more kinetic energy into a project or to take it out, you need to do the work. Apply force over a distance. The rest of the chapter uses these basic concepts to develop the idea of potential energy, gravitational and spring potential energy for now, which is related to what we call conservative force, covered in section 4.4. For now, we are going to start with two conservative forces that you already have seen, gravity and spring force. But later on, you are going to see there are many more conservative forces. In fact, we believe that all four fundamental forces of nature are conservative at the very basic level. So, what does it mean for a force to be conservative? Your textbook talks about it in terms of path independence. Amount of work done by conservative force is independent of path. Take example 4.9, for example. And it's correct as far as it goes. But I like to describe conservative force as a predictable force. It's so predictable that when a conservative force does negative work to reduce kinetic energy, you can bet that you can get that energy back. Look at this thrown ball for an example. As it moves up, gravity does negative work and takes out kinetic energy, but at the top, I know that I can get all the kinetic energy back as the ball falls back down. So, the negative work done by a conservative force isn't really lost. No more than money you deposit into your bank account is money lost. It's energy stored into a form that is not kinetic energy. We call this new form of energy potential energy. Your textbook shows formulas for two forms of potential energy we introduce now, gravitational potential energy 
mgh and spring or elastic potential energy one half kx squared you will have some homework problems to practice using them not that mathematical calculations are the main focus of this class these potential and kinetic energies together form what we call mechanical energy conservation of mechanical energy is a very useful principle that we used to solve many problems in physics and engineering which I guess we won't really do in this introductory class. In the next chapter, we will pick up some of these themes developed in this chapter. In particular, chapter 5 we will introduce momentum, the second conserved quantity we introduce. Please let me know if there are any questions and have fun reading through the chapter, working through the assignments and the problems. Bye.